Ya minna, Carl from Purple News Plays. I've got another game from Japan for you this week. Today I'm taking a look at Solo Camp Pocket from designer Hiroshi Kawamura and publisher Ju Game. This is now the second game in the Ju Game Pocket series that I'm taking a look at after really loving Last Dungeon Pocket last year. This one is a small card game, solo only, in which you're basically going on a solo camping experience, playing out a sort of resource management puzzle with the cards to prepare food and prepare gear and use that food and gear to take part in different activities on your camping trip, hoping to maximize scoring by building sets of different kind of combos of cards. No disclaimer needed on this one as this is my copy of the game. But with that said, let's head down to the table to see how this one plays and then I'll meet you back up here to let you know what I think. To set up a solo game of Solo Camp Pocket, begin by placing out the collection area and field area card onto the screen. Now normally when I play, I would play this like this with cards here and here, just separating the sort of top and bottom of my play area. But in order to keep the camera zoomed in as much as possible, I'm actually going to rotate it this way, allowing myself to have a small field area over here, a large collection area over here, and then I'm going to leave some space down here at the bottom of the screen for my own hand of cards. Next, removing the five event cards from the deck of cards, setting those aside for just a second. I will take the remaining cards, meaning food, activity, and gear cards, giving that a good shuffle. And then from that shuffle deck, dealing out five cards into my hand. Setting the deck off to the side for just a minute, but this starting set of five cards, I'm actually going to be able to only choose three of them from this set to start. And right now it's not really going to make any reason or make any sense why I'm picking the things that I'm picking because I haven't explained how the game works, but I will just go ahead and select cards. I'm going to get rid of these two cards, putting them back into the deck. Leaving that here for just a second, going back to the event cards from these five cards, giving those a shuffle and selecting three of those at random to be used in the game. The last two cards will get removed back to the box. And then one of these three cards will be shuffled into the main deck of cards to set up for the first round. The other two cards will be saved until the second and third rounds of the game because there will be one event card in each round. So I'm going to set that here with space for a discard pile right there. And I'll just set these two down here off into the corner of the screen to pull back in later. And like that, we are all set up for a game of Solo Camp Pocket. So as I mentioned already, Solo Camp Pocket is going to play out over a series of three rounds and a round is going to end when we've played through the entire deck. On my turn, I'm going to have basically three options available to me. I can pay the cost of a card as shown in the top left corner here in order to play that card out into the playing area. And depending on the type of card that will get played either into the field area or the collection area, and I'll explain how that works in just a minute. I can also choose to discard a card into my discard pile over here, always discarding face down, in order to draw two new cards from the deck. Now, I should pause here and mention that. At the end of my turn, any cards that I haven't used will be discarded anyway, and the next round always starts by drawing three cards. So to discard a card to take two cards is actually worse than discarding your card to draw three cards for the next round, but it means that I can make better use of what's in my hand, so hopefully that'll become clearer as I get into gameplay. The other thing that I can do is choose to keep cards in my hand for the next turn. And to do that, I'm going to need to discard a number of cards from the top of the deck equal to the number of cards that I choose to keep into my hand. And if I do that on the next turn, I will still draw three new cards from this deck, so I will end up with more than three cards in my hand. And that's going to be important because I should talk about the different costs of things. There are three different types of costs. On this card here, you can see this is a cost of two time. This is a cost of two gear. And on this reading card here, we see two time and two food. So gear, food, and time are the three things that we're going to be paying. 
And time is basically going to be a number of cards that I need to discard from my hand in order to play that card. And when we play a card, food and gear will get placed into our field area. And then later on, in order to take an activity or do an activity, I need to spend time for my hand, as I've already mentioned. But I also need to spend cards in my field area that have at least as many food and or gear as shown on the activity that I'm trying to do. And if I do that, the activity then gets played to my collection area and any cards in my field that I've used to pay for that will also be moved over to the collection area. And the reason you're doing that is because the cards in the collection area will score you points at the end of the game and ultimately by the end of the third round, I'm trying to score as many points as possible to do well in the game. Inside this deck there are also event cards. The event card will do whatever it says on the card when it comes out, but also the event card will remain in my hand, which means while that card is useless as far as playing and scoring, that card can still be spent to play cards into my field or collection area as time, can also be spent in order to take two new cards from the deck. But when an event card is spent, it's removed from the game rather than putting into the discard pile. So let me show you the cards that I have right now and explain a little bit about how the scoring works. Here I have an activity called bird watching and it says that if I have four gear cards in my collection at the end of the game, I get plus one point. And you can see that here because this card is normally three points, but if I end the game with at least four gear cards in my collection, this card will rotate and will then score four points. So it's not just about getting cards into your collection, but it's also about making specific sets of things to match even sort of bigger bonus scoring conditions. This is a marshmallow. The marshmallow is a one food resource that costs one time to play out. But also it says here that if I have the campfire in my collection, this will also score me one point. And finally, here's another activity, two time and two food that is reading. And this says with the reading, if I pair it with coffee in my collection, I will get an additional two points. So it increased from three into a five point card. And that's basically it for the rules of the game. It's all going to be about making sets and sort of managing my resources as best as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to spend one time by discarding this bird watching card to play this marshmallow into my field area. Then, this reading is actually not a bad one to have. The question is, do I wait for it to come back again on a future round or do I pay to keep it in my hand right now? And I think I'm going to pay to keep it in my hand. So to do that, again, discard one card to keep one card. And that's the end of the round. That means I'm then drawing back three more cards. Here I've got sort of beautiful scenic view, three time, three food, and three gear, but that scores me 10 points, which is huge. Here I've got a nap that scores me three points, takes two time and two food, but also scores an additional three points if I also have the cot card in my collection. And here is my campfire that I need for that marshmallow, which is sad because I don't have any gear and I don't have any more sort of resource cards coming out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this mountain to draw two more cards. Well, there's toast. And there's the cot. Ah, it should also mention, and I'll put a subtitle in about this, that ability to discard one card and draw two cards can only be done twice per turn. So I think actually what I'm going to do is, forget about the reading, discard two cards to play the cot. Then I'm going to get rid of this toasty to draw two more cards the second time. And by doing that, and I'll explain more of these cards later because they're going to go away right away. Two time, and here are two gear to play that fire and also that cot like that. Drawing back to three cards, one, two, three. I've got a coffee for one time and one food that also scores one point if I have the reading card in my collection. A tarp that just gives me three gear for three time. And then we've got this kayak activity that costs three time, two food, and one gear for four points, 
plus one point if I have the fishing activity as well. Hmm. I don't love it, but I want to put the coffee out just so I have more food. So I'll do that to play coffee. And then I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to discard that card because it doesn't do anything for me. Drawing one, and two, and three. All right, so here we've got hot wine. Two time and one food. Scores an additional one point if I pair it with beer. Curry cup noodles. No time, it's a free one resource, which is pretty cool. And here I've got my telescope, which will score me two points for two time and one gear. But if I have the sort of sunny weather in my game events this time, it would score an additional three points. So that's kind of a push my luck kind of thing because I haven't seen any events come out yet. So I don't really care about that right now. So I can play this one for free like that. And then I'm going to play this to draw two cards that I'm instantly going to get rid of. Oh, there's the beer. Two time and one food to play out this coffee. And the food I'm going to use, sorry, not coffee, hot wine. The food I'm going to use is the marshmallow because that pairs with my fire for extra points later on. Like that. Again, one. Whoops, that's my discard pile. One, two, and three. All right, here's my first event, a business call, which says, I'm going to choose a card at random from the field and place it into the discard pile. That's sad, so these two cards are gonna get shuffled up. Doesn't really matter because they're both one food, and I will be losing the coffee into my discard pile. But again, I still get to keep that as a card that I can spend for time or to draw new cards. Then I can't play either of those because that's a three and a four time, which is horrible. This is just three points for three fish, sorry, three time for three food, scores two points on its own. The tent, four time to play gives me two gear, but also if this is in my collection, I will then increase my hand size here by one card. So I'll always be drawing four instead of three. But that's expensive to get out. So I'm going to get rid of that phone for drawing two cards again. Like that. Still nothing that I can really use. Here's a trekking activity, three time and two food for five points. And this is a sauna, a tent sauna. Three time, one food and one gear for five points, which does nothing for me. So I am again going to discard to draw two more cards. One, two, we got a camping knife that is one gear for one time, but also gets me a point if I tie it to the cooker. And here's a Dutch oven one time for two gear, but it says if I have a camp knife in my collection, this one, I get a point. But I think because I have so many cards, I'm actually going to discard all of those to play the tent into my collection. Because if I can increase my hand size, that's pretty cool. Then we draw three cards. That's the last card. So that's the end of the round. We're going to shuffle up all of these cards. Finish drawing the rest of our hand. And then adding one more event into the deck. And shuffling that up again. to reset for the second round. All right, steak, three time for three food and two points. Camping knife, one time for one point, pairs with a cooker. And reading, no, sorry, coffee that pairs with reading for a point, one and one. Got two gear and one food. I'm gonna play the steak to play out the coffee. And right now it's not gonna matter to trade that in. So I'm just going to discard that and draw three more cards. Oop. <laughs> Great. All right. So we just got a lost item, which means one of the things in our hand is going to get discarded at random. We're losing the beer, which is sad because I need that to pair with the hot wine. Dutch oven pairs with a kitchen knife. Sorry, the camp knife. Well, I might as well use that to play this into my collection. Because now I got lots of gear, I got lots of food. Drawing three cards one, two, three, 
two, three. All right. Sauna gets five. Trekking gets five. Now, this is only one gear and one food, but I can overpay and not get stuff back. And I think I might do that simply to get my tent played out so I have more cards available to me. Yeah, let's do that. So first I need to get rid of something to draw two cards. One and two. Oh, and actually that is cool because if I start getting gear cards, this is going to be worth more. But I wouldn't mind getting some of that stuff here anyway. And if I do that, this is wasted. Huh. Yeah, let's just do what I was originally planning. Those three as time. One food is my coffee. Doesn't pair with anything. I'll just stick it here for right now. And then my tent. And then my sauna gets played with those. I did overspend, but now I have a hand size of four. One, two, three, four. And that's a little bit sad because... I don't know what I have. Oh, I can pay for some of this stuff. All right, that pairs with my coffee, but I don't have enough food for it. Again, that pairs with my cot, but I don't have enough food for it. This I definitely can't do. So I'm going to get rid of that to add two cards. Huh. Three goes to six. I like that. All right, so I'm spending these three to play the fish. And then I'm going to discard one. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to discard one to keep that. Then I draw one, two, three. I'm out of cards, so this is the start of the third round. Drawing my fourth card. Adding the last event. Oops, I just saw what it was. Into the deck. Like that. And then. I want that. Let's see what else we got. There's the cot that I also want. The kayak I don't care about. The rainwear protects me from a storm. If there's a storm event coming. But it's late game and I don't really care too much. So I'm gonna trash those two. and fish to play out which one's worth more this cot which sorry this nap which pairs with the cot and then I've got these two cards I'd love to score that but I can't get food out there with this card right now so I'm going to Trash that to draw two cards. Ooh, there's a weather. Weather says shuffle the discard and place two cards at the bottom of the deck. So two of these are coming back at the bottom of my deck. And I am going to get rid of that to do my second draw two this round. Not great. But we did have a sunny event. It means this is worth lots of points now. So, you know what, this is might as well go up there because that doesn't pair with anything. Then I want to do that. But I still want to keep this book, I think. So I'm going to discard those two. Plus this Dutch oven. Which does pair with a camp knife if I ever get one. It means that gets placed out. I'd still really like this, but I don't know if it's worth wasting a card to keep it. Five points is not small, though, because I do have the coffee. Yeah, let's do it. Trashing one card to keep that drawing four. One, two, three, and four. Ooh, there's a stake. Ah. It's worth mentioning the game's going to end as soon as this runs out, and I've got five cards left. So if I take two cards this turn, nothing.
Hmm. I need one more food. If I play out this knife, that's not enough for the bird watching. One, two, three gets that out. No, I need that. All right, then I'm getting rid of the bird watching to draw. Hold on. No, I'm not. I'm playing those three to play the meat. Actually, hold on before I do that. Let me bring those three back because I'm not 100% clear on the rules. It says when the cards run out, the game ends. So if I draw these and it's run out, I don't think I get my turn. I don't know if run out means I can't draw or if this is gone. So we're going to play that slightly differently because I want to have more cards. This gets played to draw two more of those. Then, three of those get played. Let's keep that beer just in case. Three of those get played to play the fish. Or sorry, the steak. Then this gets played to draw two more. And I will play those two plus this steak to play this book like that. Then I would draw this card, and that's the end of what I've got. So this card does nothing, this card does nothing, and I'm going to score this area. So let me slide everything over just a little bit. And you'll see on the back of that card I was looking at before to separate the two things into collection and field is a score ranking card. So the first thing I want to do is go through all of the cards and flip over the cards that have their conditions met. If I have a campfire, this flips over. If I have a marshmallow, this flips over. If I have a nap, this flips over. And if I have the cot, this flips over. Steak does nothing. Hot wine needs beer, I don't have it. Coffee, if I have reading, it flips. Reading, if I have coffee, it flips. This one says, if we had sunny event, this flips. We did have the sunny event. So that's going to flip over. Tent says nothing. That doesn't score. Fish does nothing. Sauna is fine. And the Dutch oven says if I have a camp knife, this flips. I don't. So we're going to add all of our points together. 1 plus 6 plus 2 plus 5 plus another 5 and 2 is 21 so far. Plus 5 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus nothing, plus five, and this also doesn't score unless I had that knife. So we hit a score of 35. Let me just double check that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 14, 15, 16, 21, 26, 27, 28, and six is 34, and one is 35, which is a little sad. <laughs> That's the high threshold of this sort of middle level camper. Just one more point and I would have been a veteran camper. But it's better than being a first timer or just going for a picnic. So I'm not too unhappy with a sort of middle level score. And that is solo camp pocket. So at this point, I do like to take a look at the components. There's the components. You've seen the components on screen the whole time. Everything is just cards. I do love the sort of almost paper cutout style illustration on all of these cards. They look really nice. Colors are very poppy. It's very easy to see the difference between food and gear and activity. Let me show the other two events that we didn't see on camera. This is that squall that the rain jacket would have prevent, protected me from. And this one is going to remove a number of cards from the deck into the discard pile equal to the number of the round plus one. So if this came out in the first round, you'd discard two cards from the deck, second round three, and third round four directly from the deck to the discard pile. And again, if you had the raincoat, you would get protected from that. The other one is this rainbow. And this rainbow is going to allow you to choose one card of your choice from the discard to add into your hand directly. So again, I love the way that this game looks. The card quality is, 
It's a bit of a glossy, not glossy, but like smooth finish. It's not linen finish, but it's got a nice sort of matte feel to it. They're not super glossy and slimy. The thickness could be a little bit thicker, but it's nice quality. They shuffle very nicely. Again, very poppy colors. Looks really nice. Very easy to understand all of the iconography. This score ranking card with the sort of collection and field divider is very cool. Works very well. Just like the other games in the Jew Game Solo or Jew Game Pocket series, the game does just come in a little tuck box like this. Again, very nice artwork. No rules in the box. There is a QR code that takes you to their website with all of their rules. But the nice thing about that is the rules do update. I actually found an error in the rules online and am now, yay, credited in the rules for helping them find it. But anyway, the nice thing about digital rules is that they can be updated like that and they can be accessed from any device. Also, it's nice because the sort of shape and size of the rules is more sort of designed to fit a screen and scroll and read very, very nicely. Now, that does mean you need a device in order to learn how to play the game, but this game plays very easily. So sort of once you understand the rules, that shouldn't be a big hassle. The game itself does come in one of these foil Ziploc baggies as well, but I think that's mostly just a way to keep everything protected when it's being sold. I do keep them in that, but otherwise it is just a tech box and another small card explaining the pocket series from Jew Game. And again, that also has that same QR code link on the back to check out the rules. That's basically it for the components. Meet me back up top and I'll let you know what I think about the game itself. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. This one's going to be a bit of a quick review for me simply because this is a very small card game and also it's a fairly rules light card game. Basically a, a very straightforward resource management card game kind of system in which you've got a small hand of cards that you're basically discarding a set number of cards in order to play out specific cards to build up a resource pool that you're then using later with, again, more cards discarded to then play out these activity cards working along the way to try and make pairs of activity cards with certain gear cards that work together as sort of groups, for example, a marshmallow over the fire or a cot to take a nap in or beer and wine together to have a party and so on, trying to get these different set scoring combinations along the way. But there are also other cards that will allow you to have an extra card in your hand, extra cards that score points based off of event cards that come out in the game, and so on. So it really is a resource management, but also sort of card management. And what I mean by that is a large part of the system of this game is going to be related to managing the number of cards that you have available to you. In that, all of the cards in your deck basically represent your time spent on this camping trip. And in order to get things done along the way, you need to discard cards to play out cards as if, the, as if time was passing. But you're also then sometimes discarding cards to draw more cards into your hand. You're often sometimes discarding cards to keep a specific card in your hand that you can't make use of on any given turn or on a specific given turn that you want to hold on to for the next turn, thereby expanding your hand for the next turn, but also allowing you to focus on playing that card later when you have the resources available to you. So this deck as timer mechanism is an interesting one because you are playing through basically three cycles of the deck and you're trying to get as many cards played out, but not just as many cards, also the right combination of cards played out in order to score as much as possible by the end of the game. And along the way, there are these event cards, as I mentioned, slotted into the deck that are going to make things happen, sometimes good, sometimes bad, making you discard more cards, making you recover cards from the discard, that does twist things up and make you sort of need to react to things that happen along the way, and yes, it does randomly become positive or negative each time you play, but that does sort of, sort of make it feel a little bit more thematic like a camping trip that things are going to happen along the way that you have to sort of deal with. And there are cards in the deck that will react to those events happening. There are certain things that will prevent bad things from happening. There are certain cards that will score more based on events that have happened and so on. So there is a little bit of way to sort of manipulate or deal with some of those things that are coming out. But for the most part, those events are just little twists in the gameplay that sort of 
throw a wrench into the works and make you react to the things that are happening. The good thing about these events though is that the event card once it comes out is a card in your hand that you can discard for time in a variety of different ways so that you're not wasting a regular card that you might want to play out later on. So that's basically the gist of the game all over, I mean completely explained right now. It is a very simple game but it is a very interesting game because this idea of when to burn through cards to get the thing that you need when to slow down and play lots of little things with little cards to, or little amounts of cards in order to sort of build up a, a resource supply to then use later on. When to focus on these good combos of cards to score the extra bonus points whenever possible. When to focus on the cards that don't combo but just give you big point values along the way. When to focus on cards that interact with the event cards in some way. When to play out that card that gives you the extra card in your hand, so now you have four cards to play each time, which is both a good thing and a bad thing in this game because, again, the cards are your timer. So the more cards you have coming into your hand, if you don't make use of them, the faster you are burning through that timer. So having four cards in your hand is not always a good thing. Sometimes that's actually punishing because you're churning through the cards faster and therefore, thereby bringing about the end of the game more quickly. So there's a lot of this sort of decision making about should I be saving up lots of resources and keep pumping in the resources until I get to a point that I start converting them all over? Should I play resources and convert them as soon as possible? Should I focus on pairs and combos? Should I focus on big scoring cards? Should I focus on resources that are also scoring when they get put into my collection? There's a lot of little stuff happening here, even though it is a very simple resource management, hand management card game kind of a game. I really enjoy what's happening here. Now this isn't obviously the most sort of the deepest of solo experiences. It is a very small card game. I actually have played other small card games that is that are more more sort of complex or fulfilling sort of brain crunchy kind of games, but that's not what this is. This thematically is supposed to be sort of showing you a solo camping experience. It's about getting out into nature, accomplishing activities, and enjoying this sort of relaxing experience. And likewise, this card game itself is sort of that. It's sort of take this out and just sort of play through this nice relaxing experience and see what happens. It never gets too crunchy, it never gets too brain burning, it never gets too punishing. It really is a nice casual experience where there is still this puzzle of sort of efficiently managing the hand of cards that you're dealt and seeing how much you can get done and seeing how sort of fulfilling an experience or fulfilling a camping trip that you can make throughout this journey. And it is about the journey more than it is about the solving of a puzzle in this game, which I enjoy. Again, this is not going to be one of my favorite games ever made, but it's absolutely the kind of game that will stay in my collection because it's fun to play. It's a nice experience. It's a nice puzzle to burn, to churn through while you're playing. And it's light enough that it's fun to just pull out 15, 20 minutes, play through it, enjoy the experience, see how well you did, maybe play through again because it's short enough, and then throw it back on the shelf until next time when you have a short window of time that you kind of want a light puzzle to run your brain through without really breaking your brain or getting into some deep, complex kind of game. I really like this one, and it makes me very interested to try out more of these pocket games from Jugame. I do have one more coming, the sequel to Last Dungeon Pocket, or sort of at least spiritual successor, Escape from the Moon, that I'm excited to show you soon as well. Keep an eye on this channel for more of these pocket games from Jugame and more games from Japan in general. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, I do ask that you like, subscribe, and click the bell icon below. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks.